Hi, I'm Levin Akin. I'm the director of Crossing, which opens the panorama section of the Berlinale. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bourbobak, and now we are talking about the film Crossing. Hi, welcome to the Teddy. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, your previous film, And Then We Danced, um, I read it in an interview that you did extensive research mm -hmm. going into the film, and I was wondering, was the process for Crossing similar? Uh, yes, it was, and actually uh, there were some seeds planted for Crossing when I was researching mm -hmm. and then we danced. So that stayed with me. Yeah. And then I kept going with yeah. that those seeds for, yeah. for, and then we, uh, for Crossing. Yeah, can you guide us through a bit of yeah, this sure. like, research process? Yeah, yeah of course. So um, usually, I mean, in this case, I heard a story when I was doing and then we danced about yeah. a grandfather who had a, a, a trans grandchild. Yeah. Uh, and he was very supportive of his child. Uh, and this was in Georgia, and I was just sort of surprised because, you know, he was from an older generation. Mm. Usually in Georgia, there's a very big divide between the older and the younger, especially when it comes yeah. to queer issues. Um, so I was sort of fascinated by that story, and, you know, I wanted, sort of similar to And Then We Danced, to do a story, another film about... Um, um, positive images for yeah. queer people, positive stories. Yeah. Um, not positive in a naive way, but I, I, I think that, you know, these narratives that we see, mm -hmm. uh, especially from the, this region, where there aren't many queer narratives coming from the, this region, right. I think, to me, I want to see other paths, other ways, other mm -hmm. stories. Um, and I think both with them, then we dance and with Crossing, that's what I try to do. Yeah. Um, so with Crossing, I knew that I wanted to be in Istanbul. I knew that I wanted to explore Istanbul, explore those rooms mm. that I know. You know, for me, when I watch a film, I want to travel. I want to go somewhere. I want to go yeah. into rooms and places that I haven't been to before. Yeah. So I think that curiosity also guides the research process. Mm. Um, and a lot of the people that are in, and then we danced both in front of the camera and behind the, uh, or in crossing, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, both behind the camera and in front of the camera are people from the community in Turkey. Yeah. So it was important for us to also have representation behind mm -hmm. the camera. Yeah. Um, which, which was very good. Yeah, right. Istanbul, as you mentioned, sort of becomes a main protagonist yes. in the film in yeah. a way. Can you talk a bit about what role did exactly the topography of this city play in the movie? Of course. So I have a very personal relationship with Istanbul myself. I used to, uh, as a child, go to Istanbul because we had relatives there. And mm. then we used to take that bus from Istanbul to okay. the Black Sea and then to Georgia. So I've done that journey many times myself. Yeah, and I think that's also one of the reasons I wanted to capture Istanbul and that journey on a film. Mm. And to me, Istanbul is a, a fantastic place. It's a place that always changes. It's a place right. that's very, very hard to sort of catch. And you know, they say there's like 15 million people there, but mm. probably unofficially there's like 25 because there's so mm. many undocumented people. And it's a place that's constantly changing, you know? Yeah. The demographic is changing. The landscape is changing. There's always, you know, they're always building something new, and it's a city that you can really get lost in. And I think yeah. it's one of the few remaining that I know of, sort of. Maybe, you know, Mexico City is probably similar, but cities that feel very, very alive and vibrant mm. and a little uncontrolled. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, they mentioned that in the film, but it is a city where you can probably mm. get lost yeah, and never absolutely. find your way out. 
Yeah, so if you want to get lost, like Istanbul is <laughs> I think that's a way, good place. Way, uh, yeah, good place. Have you been there? No, no, unfortunately not yet. No. No, but definitely the field made me. Okay, good. Made me feel like I would okay, like good. to good. venture out. That's nice. Um, the trans community in Istanbul is a very integral part of the narrative, mm -hmm. and you said that a lot of people from the community worked on the film as well. Um, I'm wondering how did you approach the portrayal of this community in the film and what mm -hmm. ethical considerations did you take into um, account? Um, I, um, you know, first when I came there, I really didn't know anyone in the community. Yeah. Um, so the production company that I was working, that we were working with in Turkey introduced me to different LGBTQ plus mm. um, organizations. And one of them is Pink Life. And they're also part of the film. And they work with uh, trans people and trans rights in uh, Istanbul mm. and in Ankara, actually. So um, through uh, Birfilm, the production company, I, I started doing interviews with people. Mm. So I met a lot of people that I spoke with and that I um, talked to about you know, th their life in Istanbul. And what I found out is that, you know, just like anywhere with anything, there is different lives. Mm. And I felt that to me that was important to sort of show in the film that, you know, yeah. th yes, there are different yeah. paths yeah. in Istanbul. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as we talked about your previous film, And Then We Danced, dance played a major role in that film. But in Crossing, it's equally important, I would say. There are many um, scenes and many moments where people connect through dance. Mm -hmm. What draws you to dance so much and, and where do you see this importance of it? That um, I used so to much? dance, believe it or not, when I was young. Oh, cool. uh, so I've always loved dance myself yeah. and I was, you know, I have a soft spot for dance and dancers. Um, and um, um, I just think there is, you know, there is something that happens between people in dance. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, in the movement, and you can portray a lot of emotions and say a lot of things, and you can connect people through dance. Yeah. And I think that's why it always plays an integral role in, like, I think every film I've made, actually. Okay. I've always yeah. had dance yeah. things, scenes. Mm. Yeah. I think every film should have some dance. Yeah, probably. If we, if we yeah, we need, it's like, you know, sex scenes. You need sex yeah. scenes, you need dance scenes. Yeah, it's always a good... Yeah, it's a good way to yeah. talk. Yeah, without much talking. Without, with your body, yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, language becomes also very important. And there is this um, kind of title card in the very beginning mm -hmm. of the film saying that Georgian and Turkish are both languages that... Mm -hmm. Gender not, neutral. That yeah. are gender neutral. They don't know, like, grammatical gender. Um, and I had to wonder while I was watching the film, I unfortunately don't speak either one of those mm -hmm. languages. Um, so I had to rely on the English subtitles, mm -hmm. which is a gendered yeah. uh, language. And I was wondering, is there something that goes missing when you are like... I mean, I think so in a way, because mm. for instance, Leah, the retired teacher yeah. who's looking for Tekla, never mentions Tekla by her you know she's always like yeah. talking about her as it or that yeah which is also a way for her because she's not really accepting Tekla as you know she says in the beginning of the film well you know what's her name and she's like she calls herself Tekla yeah. she doesn't say she calls herself Tekla obviously she says yeah. um, they call themselves or it calls itself mm. Tekla yeah and I think that's a little something that gets lost a little yeah. that you know she doesn't instantly accept her her gender identity yeah yeah. Um, that comes, you know, later in the film. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that was just interesting yeah. Uh, yeah. in that way because I also do speak a language which doesn't recognize ah, okay. gender and then ah. I know that sometimes it can be a bit Yeah, tricky. tricky yeah, it was a little that. tricky actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can imagine. Um, one very interesting part of the film was it was not really in the center of it, but we kept on going back to um, Evrim's legal process mm -hmm. of trying to get mm -hmm. um, documentation mm -hmm. for herself. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about this process? Yeah, yeah of course. So that was part of, of the research that I did. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, you know, that whole situation is so absurd. Yeah. Where you have a group of men, old men, essentially deciding who you're supposed to be. And if you want to, you know, become a man or a woman, um, you have to sort of conform to their idea of 
of mm. identity, yeah. you know, so, you know, you, you can't be a masculine woman or not, like, they have to, like, decide, like, okay, like, you literally go to a judge who's like, yeah. okay, you, you can become, you know, you can get the female or male uh, ID, ID, identification. Uh, so that scene in the film actually happened exactly like that. I was in mm -hmm. a room uh, with a woman yeah. who had that meeting. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just felt like, oh, I want to show these. Again, you want to show situations mm -hmm. and places and things. I mean, I work with fiction. Sometimes I'm like, maybe I should work more documentary style. Mm -hmm. I guess it becomes both and then we dance in crossing, I guess is kind of a little a hybrid in a way because yeah. it's all very, very authentic. And most of the people, especially the trans people in the film yeah. in front of the camera are, you know, playing versions of themselves. Yeah. So so yeah, I think I think you know for me it was important to show that process and just mm -hmm. so, sort of show the absurdity of it. But again, I think I don't. To me, uh, you were talking about the ethical aspect of it before of, yeah. of the portrayals. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's important as a cis man. I, I feel it's extra also important. I don't want to. I'm not interested in in. Um, the sort of horrors or the negativity of things. Mm. They're there in my films, they exist in the background. Yeah. You can feel it, you understand it. it's a realistic portrayal. But I'm more interested in showing moments of solidarity, moments of kindness between mm. people. Um, yeah. I feel like I miss that in the world right now. And I just wanna watch a film where I don't have to sit and be like, mm. oh no, something bad's gonna happen. Like I'm, 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 I'm yeah. I can yeah. barely watch yeah. TV anymore because I'm just like afraid. <laughs> like if somebody yeah. recommends something, I'm like, does something horrible happen? They're like, no, okay, then I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, right. There's enough horrible things <laughs> yeah, happening yeah, there, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and then we danced had like a very intense reaction to in it Georgia, yeah. in Georgia when it premiered. Yeah. Um, I wonder how did you feel about that? If it in any way kind of showed you how powerful the medium is yes. actually that you're working with and what do you expect with with crossing, crossing. yeah i mean I, I it really felt with and then we danced the whole thing of like art can be political mm. art you know my films are political but but i don't really talk about it yeah um, and and then we danced was obviously quite political i mean it had a political impact and it had a uh, i mean it was stressful everything that happened in georgia because i didn't want anyone to get hurt and, and things like that mm -hmm. but it also showed that art has power and you know when fascists take over the first thing they do is cut the art yeah because they culture. know that that's where you can affect people and and then we dance really did affect people and mm. we're having similar situations now in sweden where film and art is being starting to become more controlled and we're getting more directives of what stories we can tell and they have to be national romantic now yeah. and yeah wow. it's a uh, scary times so Absolutely. um yeah it was you know and with crossing i hope that it doesn't create the same situation i don't think it will mm. because the thing with and then we dance was you know georgian dance is such a, a sort of cherished macho mm. thing in Georgia and yeah. tra so that's what really I think offended some people um, and uh, Crossing doesn't really go into that territory in that way yeah. it's a different type yeah. of narrative so I think it will be fine I hope so yeah well let's uh, hope so yes Levan thank you so much thank you it was a really pleasure to talk to you thank you thank you